Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, Game Hump, the weekly show that we're going to do every single week from now until eternity. And uh, this week, I'm very excited to introduce our guest today, and his name is Ben. Hey, yeah. Well, Ben, are you going to do some kind of wild introduction, or are you going to just sit there and point your fingers at the screen? Uh, usually, I just point. I'm a pointer. Uh, I'm Ben. I'm a, you know, a really big, uh, I would say more like 90s, 2000 gamer. I'm not... I like more like horror, uh, first-person shooters, uh, MMOs. Well, hold, hold, on, hold on, hold on a minute, hold on, hold on a minute. Did Whoa. you just say horror or horror? Both. Oh, okay. We got it. Okay. No, that's good. Um, what, what I'm basically looking to do here with this, this very exact show, we're going to try our best to get people through that midweek hump. And that's why the show is going to be called Game Hump. We're going to talk about current events. We're going to talk about our favorite games. We're going to talk about what's going on in the industry, what's going on in a small gaming community, large gaming communities, local gaming communities, all kinds of fun stuff. And each week we're going to try to add more people to it, try to get more interactive with other people that are watching it. It's going to, it's going to be something that hopefully will entertain and also be exciting and, and interesting to people. So I'm really excited to have Ben here. Um, ben, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I kind of wanted to give everyone a quick little dose as to what this even is all about you know what i'm saying word word so and i'm not even sure if the camera is bouncing between you and me when, when we talk i don't know if there's an auto feature of that so i'm just doing it manually but that's that's fine we can i'll do it manually i'm not really too concerned about it but i'm really excited to have you here ben thanks for taking the time real short notice i just bounced this off you just like today i'm like hey how about tonight and you're like well, I guess I guess we'll do it tonight. But yeah, you go ahead and tell us a little bit about yourself and introductions. What now? What was like the first game console that you got into? Uh, the first game console was um, I think it was a Super Nintendo that I got, uh, and that was like right around the time the sixty four came in. But <laughs> all right, so I had this uh, Super Nintendo. My buddy had a sixty four. My other buddy had a Nintendo. I hated the person with the 64 because he had the new console. I was sick and tired of the Super Nintendo because I could only play only three games. So I'd just go over to my buddy and play the Nintendo because he had hundreds. You know, because the games were like, they weren't cheap, but they were cheaper back then. So he had just tons of them. Uh, yeah, totally. I, I, I know what you mean, man. When the N64 was starting to come out, um, and that was... 1996 when that was first released i actually like kind of boycotted that whole generation for a long time um it was like 1997 late i shouldn't say late 97 but mid 97 before i finally jumped into that generation and when i did that was actually with the sega saturn um i was hanging on to that 16-bit era as long as i could um with the genesis the super NES, and the turbo graphic 16 i i enjoyed that way more than I liked what was being offered on the N64. Right. Uh, and then once once I got into, I would say, the 64 era, I was going to my friend's house to play uh, the PlayStation 1. And what really got me a hold of gaming was a little game called uh, Silent Hill. That game just... just nosedived me into gaming and I couldn't stop from there. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Did you just say nosedived? I did, I did. Oh, okay, good, good. Well, that's really awesome. Um, so what would you say um, would be one of your favorite consoles of all time? Would it be the PlayStation to the Silent Hill or was it? I would say it would be the PlayStation 2. Ooh. Just for all the memorable RPGs and horror games that came out of it. You had Silent Hill, you know, two through four. You had Resident Evil, uh, Code Veronica X, of course. Uh, Resident Evil 4 after they ported it over. You had the Guilty Gear franchise. 
you had, you know, Jack and Daxter, you had uh, um, the Dot Hack series. Oh, my God, the Dot Hack series. You, you can't forget about that. So I would say that would be my favorite for quality of games. And not to mention it was also backwards compatible. So Yes. You could play all of the PS1 games. And you could play your favorite CD on it, too. And DVD. And DVDs, yep. Ooh. That's true. <laughs> yeah, I like I like the PlayStation 2 a lot too. I uh I was holding on I was holding a bit of a grudge against it for a long time though. I was a big Dreamcast fan. I love the Dreamcast all the way until the end. Speaking of Dreamcast, there's actually a game that just came out recently. Uh, I believe it was released on Sunday. You can um, download legally download a copy of it and burn your own copy onto a CDR, the Volgar the Viking, which was an Xbox One Volgar slash slash yeah, that's actually out on Dreamcast right now, and they released PDFs of the um, instruction manual. So you can use an instruction manual. But uh, what are you doing? <laughs> nothing. <laughs> All right, yeah. So anyway, that's cool. Um, my introductions are maybe not even that much needed right now. I don't know if anybody's a subscriber on the Game Huggers. Uh, YouTube channel, or if you're a subscriber on my actual channel that this is being presented on right now, um, which is just Joshua Yeager um, uh, at the YouTubes. Um, I'm mostly interested in retro gaming. I love anything that I grew up with. I never really grew out of those types of games. So to hear um, new game consoles, um, to hear inform information or issues or bugs and, and patches and all this stuff that are out with the game game consoles that are currently popular, um, things like the PS4 or the Xbox One. Um, I do enjoy games on those every once in a while, um, but I kind of almost consider it a completely different or separate genre slash universe compared to what the gaming that I'm used to calling gaming is gaming. Um, people call shooters now. Um, what, what I used to call or still call first person shooters. If it's a shooter game, it's like Call of Duty or it's like, um, you know, the Battlefield games. Um, I, I think of those as first person shooters. I always have. Yeah, they're, they're like Doom, you know. Um, but now those are shooters. And when I grew up, shooters were games like Gradius or Blast, uh, Blazing Lasers or Lords of Thunder. Those were shooters. Uh, and now they're called shoot 'em ups or whatever. But um, I definitely prefer old game consoles. Um, I think I have a lot more fun with them. Um, I prefer old game consoles on CRT monitors. I enjoy playing games um, with people. I like to have, um, you know, people over to have game nights and stuff like that. Um, I also run and help out with some game conventions where I get to bring all of the crap that I've collected over the years to places like the Midwest Gaming Classic or the Video Game Summit or Evercon, which is a local convention, or even our own little creation that we made that's held every year in September or October, um, and that's LinkCon or Pizza and Games. Um, those are the kind of things I like to have a big, a big gaming library um, in preparation for shows like that. That's a lot of fun to me. Um, some of my favorite games that came out, um, it would depend on what genre you're talking about, um, but I'm really excited um, about right now, I'm in a, in a Famicom mode. Um, I just got a twin Famicom. Actually, I can show you that real quick. We'll do that right here. It's a brand new universe to me. Ooh. All right. And uh, I'm going to smash everything. Right, this is a twin Famicom in Japan. This is uh, sort of like the more advanced version of the NES that came out. Ooh, look at that baby. And. Um, it has everything that a normal NES would have. The game cartridges go on top, and it actually has right over here where the um, mm, Famicom disc, drives, disc. The disc drives would go. I actually just got this at Pizza and Games from Windy Games or Chris. Um, you know him from Windy Games at all. His stuff is the highest quality. It's absolutely fantastic, and the system has totally got me hooked right now. I wound up picking up this in a multi cart. It's like four hundred one. Hold on. Um, yes. What? A Chinese what game was in there? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's actually a picture of Resident Evil 6, I believe. <laughs> uh, five. Five. Yeah. Oh, whatever, yeah. Five, five. And then I got uh, Rockman 5 and Adventure Island 3 
and Bonk, Bonk's Adventure, which came out on the Famicom as well. And I'm just having a really good time with it. Um, I love this stuff. The NES is one of my favorite consoles of all time. Some of my favorite NES games are like the Castlevania series, Batman's, Ninja Gaiden's, Double Dragon 2. Those are like the best things in the world um, to me. Um, but in the 16-bit era, I was all about the Turbo Graphics and the Super Nintendo. I mean, some of the games that came out for that, uh, your Final Fantasy VI is Secret of Mana. Um, and then for the Turbo, it's like Dungeon Explorer 2, Lords of Thunder, Gate of Thunder. I mean, I could go on and on for days about this, my introduction about about things that I'm interested in. But that's really what, what drives me to be um, a gamer, or it, it, it keeps me interested in gaming, is to find games that are like this. Um, so when you're talking about consoles that are out right now or um, systems that are, are, are big and popular now, when I see a, a style of game that plays similar to the games that I grew up with, I'm instantly attracted to it. So something like Volgar the Viking um, or Shovel Knight. Shovel Knight is brilliant. I love that game so much. It's so fun. Um, and those, those are really what interests me when I think of like games of the year type things. I'm always thinking about games like that. Um, but uh, one that I'm actually really excited about that I actually pre-ordered was um, Read Only Memories um, that is being released. I believe it's on Android and, and Steam and a few other places. But the place I, I pre-ordered it on was actually the Ouya, which is a little Android game co uh, console that came out in 2013 that just celebrated its two-year anniversary, which I'm not sure it's going to go on much longer than this two years. But I'm, I'm really excited about the Ouya. I had a good time with it. I thought the money that was put into it, which is very minimal, um, was worth it. And it was a fun system to have. A fun. I had a great time with all the free games. Got to try everything for free and play it. Um, pay for it if I enjoyed it. Um, I thought a lot of the concepts that it had and a lot of the games, a lot of the games were really fun. And um, I never had as many issues as a lot of other people had with it. So I'm really happy to say that the Ouya was a lot of fun. And I'm really looking forward to Read Only Memories. And if you don't know what Read Only Memories are, is, um, you know, take a look. Look it up. It's a really cool game and everybody should be playing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap, did I just... Oh, I guess that's the end of the show. No, um, Goodbye, everybody. That was an hour. <laughs> but, um, no, um, I'm excited. It's, 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 a, it's a good time to be a gamer, honestly, because yeah. there's a lot of really good stuff coming out, and everyone should have access to everything. I mean, regardless of what direction you're going in or what console you've purchased in this current generation you should be happy and you should be having a good time every system offers plenty right now so you have no idea how difficult it was in say the mid 90s um, when it was the super nes era or super nes and genesis era and everyone was expecting the next console um, everyone was waiting for it, like okay there's gonna be something more powerful coming and when the Super Nintendo and the Genesis were, were the kings, I mean, everybody was coming out with these new ideas. The Sega had the 32X. Well, the people that spent 150 bucks on a 32X, do you think they were super happy? I don't know. Maybe. But there weren't a whole lot of great games that came out for the 32X. Um, the Sega CD had a lot of good games for it. But, you know, again, was it really worth the price of admission? Um, then there was the Atari Jaguar, the CDI, the 3DO. Um, the list kind of goes on and on. There were so many systems that came out at that time. It, you could put a huge investment in, or you could have your parents get you that Christmas present you've always been waiting for. But the fact is that the system lasted for a year or two, and there weren't that many great games that came out for it, especially if you're a CDI owner, which I feel very, very bad for anybody that wound up getting a CDI under their Christmas tree one year. Um, but yeah, it was just, it's a weird time because you had to be really careful. You, you might as well had just gone with the systems that everyone had, like the Nintendos or the Sagas or the Playstations at the time. Um, but yeah, I mean, there was a good chance that whatever system you picked could have been the wrong one and you wind up getting really bored with it real quick. And that's unfortunate. Today, you don't really see that very much. I mean, I guess, ooh yeah, you maybe could get bored with that if you wanted games that were more like Metal Gear Solid Five or something. But I but enjoyed I mean, it. I don't think you would go for Ouya oh yeah, if you're going for one of those like top end huge, you know, publishing game developed. That's games. true. That's true. That's true. So, um, kind of segueing into this, then I kind of talked a little bit about what I'm currently playing or what I'm currently interested. In. What What about you? What are some games that you're currently playing, Ben? Um, right now I'm hooked on Destiny. Destiny. Uh. Destiny. No, 
What's yeah, that? Destiny. It's it's an MMO for the consoles, the Xbox One and the PS4. It's from the creators of Halo, and they made the the first person shooter MMO, which okay. we thought Blizzard would make, but since Activision is partnered with Blizzard and with Bungie, huge thing on that. It doesn't matter. They just released their uh, year one expansion that is just blowing up. And everyone who likes Bungie and likes Halo and has heard about Destiny is jumping on you know, the bandwagon to play. Um, if you want to you know, learn more, go to Bungie.net to find out. Whoa, 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 whoa. Are you trying to tell people about Destiny? Are you, you're saying Destiny was from the makers of Halo? Yeah. Oh, since so, Microsoft, Microsoft bought out, you know, Halo from Bungie, right? And Bungie's like, you know what? We're gonna make our own game because we're kind of sick of Halo. So they created Destiny, which is now. Do you think Destiny is better than Halo? Um. Whew! Whew! Lordy. <laughs> <laughs> I would say Destiny is as good as an original IP as Halo was when it came out. Okay, because yeah. the very first Halo was kind of revolutionary. It, it made yeah. people realize that you can do a first-person shooter on a console. You can do multiplayer online on a console. Like Halo was was gigantic. Yeah. Um. So I mean, there's there's parts that can be fixed. Like when it launched, there's like no story. There's like four hours of story, and then you need to m make up the rest. <laughs> like it was horrible. And now after a year, I think they got to the point that it should have been at launch, but because Bungie has such a huge following, that they can make up for it where other games couldn't after a whole year of failure. So, so they, when, when when Destiny launched, though, was it buggy? Was it just gameplay was completely like it, you're you're incapable of actually playing it? Was it the type of thing that was crippling? Uh, no, it was actually the story was crippling. Oh, okay, because okay. you get this little bit of story of what's going on, who you are, why why is this happening, and then that's it. Like okay. you, like somebody walks up to you and goes, "Hey." You're you're dead, but I I resurrected you to kill aliens. Bye, and then you <laughs> have the, then you have like the six months period of just going like, why is this in here? Why do I have to do this? And then they have like really really vague descriptions for like everything. They're like these people uh, live here. Kill them. I'm like what? I don't. It's it was weird. But they started adding more story to it, more in depth, like really caring for some of the NPCs in the game. Okay. And right now it's a really solid game. It's really solid. You have the MMO grind, you know, in there to gain everything instead of just a random loot table. That you could be the luckiest person ever and get the best, you know, gear and best weapon and then never have to play it again. Now you actually have to play and play and play and play to eventually get these high-end uh, items. It sounds it sounds a little bit like when Square came out with Final Fantasy fourteen, and however that game was broken to the point of it was almost unplayable. Um, a lot of people jumped off of it almost as soon as it started because of how buggy it was and servers weren't ready for people and all kinds of crap. Um, but when they wound up a year and a half later coming out with A Realm Reborn, um, a lot of people were excited about it and said that the gameplay was fixed, and a lot of the elements in the game that were wrong or broken before had been fixed. Um, so that was that was kind of neat. But this sounds like it's more or less just basically the game came out, wasn't exactly fleshed out, but now it's got better game control and it's got a better storyline and it's got all kinds of things that apparently you guys, you guys that are are Destiny heads are really interested in or excited about. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It's they added a whole new they they make it seem like the past expansions weren't for not like most okay. expansions happen and then you're like throw everything away who cares this one's kind of like um 
what we did for the whole year ends up into this expansion, and now we have to pay for, you know, our consequences or beat the bad guy, so to speak. Um, okay. Besides that, there's a little game that I'm playing. Just a little game. It's called the Rocket League. If you've heard about this. I have not, no. Rocket League, is that an Android game, or is that a... Rocket League, it's a PS4 and PC game that has cross-platform. And really? it's, it's RC cars in soccer. You drive these cars that can jump and do flips and turbo and everything, and you just hit this giant ball around like soccer. That's kind of cool. And you have 1v1 up to 4v4. And it's really simple. It Like, you look at it, you're like, this can't be that hard. And then you play it. And then 10 hours go by. You know, like, <laughs> it's just addicting as heck. And I just catch myself playing it more and more and more and more. And then I have to, you know, had to wake up for work, and I'm still playing it going, I uh, hit the snooze. I don't really need to be awake for work, do I? No, uh, I'm good. So did you say so, it was called, you said it was called Rocket Night Adventure? No, it was, <laughs> it was called Rocket League. Rocket League, okay. Yeah. okay. That sounds pretty cool. That sounds pretty cool. Um, hey, what are some games that are coming out soon that you're excited about, or anything that's that's like Maybe even holiday season. Uh, holiday season. Well, let me get right into it. Let you get right into it. Why don't we get right into it? I don't even know what's coming out this holiday season. I, I kind of don't care. But I, I do know there's a Halo 5 coming out, I believe, right, for this? There's for Halo one. 5 for Xbox One. There's Black Ops 3, uh, you know, the big titles that everyone knows. It's Assassin's Creed. There's another uh, Black Ops game? Yep. Oh, it's the third one. It's bigger, blacker, and uncut. That's sounds, what it should be called. Um, but no, for uh, 3DS coming out, it's Dragon Ball Z Extreme uh, Budoden. I think I'm saying that right. Budoden. Bakuden. No, it's Butuden. Budoden. Dragon Ball Z Extreme One Piece? No. Is that what you, is that what you said? No. It's that, called that Extreme Voodoo Den. This oh, is, is, that like, the, is that one of those Destiny Warriors games where it's like versus Dragon Ball Z or whatever now? No. No. It's made from Arc System Works who made the Guilty Gears game. It's oh, basi- really? Yeah, it's, it's basically DBZ with it looks like the mechanics of like uh, Marvel vs. Capcom. Interesting. So like, is that like is that called Rumblefish? We'll we'll call it Rumblefish. Okay, so it's Rumblefish and Dragon Ball Z characters. It's called, <laughs> it's called Bakudan, Bak Bakudan. Called Dragon Ball Z Extreme Voodoo Den. That's that's all. It's coming out sometime in October, I believe. Nice. We're almost in October twentieth. Are you dressing up for Halloween? I am. As as what? I'm gonna be Schmidt from Twenty Two Jump Street. Oh, for real? And you know, one of my buddies, uh, he's gonna play Jenko, and we're gonna team up. Oh, like giant Jenko? No, like, like Jenko and. Oh, you mean Jenga, like that wood pulling game? Yeah. You like, pull like of, Jenga, but totally pulling. different. It's 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 like when you like Plinko. Oh, um, from the Price yeah. is Right. Yep. Do you think that Drew Carey is doing as good a job as he should be? I mean, in regards to re- replacing Bob Barker. I mean, he looks like he's about to kneel over anytime soon. So. Bob Barker like, or Drew Carey. Uh, Drew Carey. Neil Bob Barker, like. Like, like Keel, like just die. I don't Did know you, what happened to this man, but I think you, in the you, application you said, process, you, you said Neil. You didn't say Keel. 
Even I, you said I, Keel. You, you know said, what? You, that, meant say, uh, you, uh, you meant uh, to say Keel, uh, but you uh, said Neil? Uh, 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 uh. Did, did you say Neil no. or Keel? No. Nope. Did you say Keel? I said Keel and Peel. <laughs> now that's a good show. It Wait, is. That's Key and, Key and Peel. Key and Peel. Yeah. That's what good. Stuff. Keel and Peel. It's fine. It's good. That's good. Okay, yeah. so. But no, like, I think Drew Carey, he looks. I don't know what happened to him from the 90s until now, but he looks like. He looks like he's about to die. And I think <laughs> what people. Like, application process. Uh, you look like you're about to die. Yeah, you can you know, just go. You got 30 more years to the show, so don't actually die. <laughs> he's like he's lost. He's lost a lot of weight. I know that's for he sure. He, he now look. he has a neck vagina. What? It's just, just it's there. Wow. It's fine. It's it's in scientific books. Hey, speaking of neck vaginas, I heard Nintendo postponed Star Fox for the Nintendo Wii U. That is true. Well, what the hell is up with that, Ben? Did you do you know anything about this? <laughs> it, I wasn't like part of Nintendo's plan, but I guess they delayed it until the first quarter of next year. Well, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing that's it's it sucks, and it's it's like. Yeah, I mean, that's disappointing to not get a major first-party title for a holiday season. Um, but I would much rather get a completed game. And that's something that you don't get a lot in this, in, in this industry in 2015. Um, games are rushed, and I'm looking at you, you know, Ubisoft and EA, who constantly put shit out on shelves. Um, you got the Assassin's Creed games, you've got Madden football, you've got you know, all of the Call of Duties and everything else that Activision pumps out as well, um, where it's like, we have to get them by November, whatever, you know, this certain date it has to be right. out, has to be out. And the developers could be like, hey, we're not ready. Like, this is not ready for, for, for the people yet. And they can do like a two-week beta, and it's like, yeah, this is good enough, we're good. And then they'll send it out, and then everyone will complain about all the issues, and then they'll send out a patch that will take an hour and a half to download, and it's just miserable, and everyone makes fun of it. Nintendo looks at that as such a major flaw. And on one side, I'm like, you guys have really not hit the ball out of the ballpark here with, with these AAA titles that we're, we're expecting. And Star Fox is something that we haven't really gotten a good Star Fox game since the N64 in the late 90s. So well, it's kind of like we're all, we're all sitting here waiting for this game. And to find out it's delayed is also disappointed. Or we're also very disappointed. Just, we're disappointed. <laughs> don't you? But we're remember, also. Don't you remember Star Fox Adventures? No, I don't, Ben. But what we are also very happy about <laughs> is to see that Nintendo actually cares about the consumers, and Nintendo's actually like they have some. We have somebody looking out for us, and that's Nintendo because they don't want to put some kind of piece of junk out on the shelf that they're going to have to patch three times just to make the game playable. Okay. They're going to wait until it's ready to go. And when we get it in March or whatever it is going to be next year, it's going to be really fun and it's going to be awesome. And I hope, I hope, I should say, I hope all these things are going to be really fun. But I'm excited. I, I can't wait to see it. I, I love Star Fox games. Um, I, one of my favorite games is the Super NES version of Star Fox. I think it's a wonderful game. It was one of the most mind blowing things to see um, polygons on a 16 bit system. But um, yeah, I, I'm disappointed to hear about it being delayed. But honestly, I don't, um, I'm not angry angry about it nintendo did just release splatoon and mario maker and right. wii u fans wii u fans should be ecstatic about those kind of games that's huge um but what are some other big uh titles that are coming out for the wii u this holiday season i can't remember a wii u there is definitely yoshi's woolly world which is basically the the success on the kirby's yarn game they decided to make this I, I, didn't, I didn't really like her I didn't really like Kirby Epic Yarn. I thought it was it was way too easy and way too cutesy. It was made for like five year olds, and I don't mean that in, a, in any kind of a negative way. It's just it is Kirby games are sometimes easy and sometimes difficult. Mostly they lean towards the easy side, but they're always really fun and the levels are really imaginative. Right. Kirby Ep Kirby's Epic Yarn was like the worst of all of those. It was like the levels were boring. They looked really pretty, um, you know, in Nintendo Wii's you know 480i or whatever it was. 
um, but you couldn't die, and the levels were so easy. You could probably just hit right and just jump all the way through them, and, and you would get... Well, I don't damage. think it was for our demographic, you know? No, and that's what worries me about this Yoshi's Yarn game, is that it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be for five-year-olds again, and that's just well, not interesting to me. Going on the mature route, there is Fatal Frame Maiden of Black Water coming out. For Whoa, did you, just, did you just say mature? Yes, I said mature. Oh, okay. Not to be mistaken with mature. Or manure. <laughs> or manure. Definitely not manure. I hope this game is a manure. So you Just, like the Fatal Frame games then? I, all right, this is weird. I love Fatal Frame. I'm just too chicken to play them. Uh, I, I played all of them back in the day, but now I'm just like, like just, I don't know. It's weird. It's a weird thing. I love horror games. I love playing them, but I'm always afraid to play them because I have a weak heart. Is it uh, is it is it horror games or is it like ghosts that freak you out? Because Fatal Frame is not about zombies and monsters no. and things like fifty tentacles coming at you and blowing you to pieces. It's about really um, kind of thought provoking and like almost subtle freakouts that happen that you could be a half an hour into the game before you see anything. Everything's very eerie and the floors are creaking yeah. and the rooms are dark and the electricity is flickering and the candles are burning out. Um, but you don't get a whole lot of violently scary things in the Fatal Frame games. They were beautifully done the way that they were subtle and they spooked the living crap out of you. Yeah, the big thing with Fatal Frame when it came out was it wasn't where you get a gun and you can shoot things. It's a girl who has this camera. That you know, you you have to fight these ghostly spirits with this camera, and when you go into the places you're walking around, you're not seeing your you know the character. You're seeing what's around her because you can walk around and see a corridor and see like a ghost walk by, you know, just that like weird freak out thing. And the trailer for this new one has no dialogue in it. It's just yearly, uh, the music just creeps you out. And it looks good. It uses the the Wii U gamepad as more of your camera. So when you like see things, you have to actually pick it up and use it as a camera, which is really cool. I mean, That's... it's going to be a workout. <laughs> <laughs> that actually sounds, that sounds really cool. I know they can do a lot of really interesting things with the Wii U gamepad. Um, do you have a Wii U? I don't, but this game is definitely uh, making me want to get one. Uh, I know about Splatoons. I know about you know Hyrule Warriors and Mario Maker, but this game is the one that's like, I really want to play this. Like, are you bummed out at all about the fact that it's going to be a download only versus an actual physical release? Um, no, because I'm just glad they finally didn't make a a spinoff game. Whichever way they want to bring it, I think the reason they're bringing it uh, to the States is because of download only. Because they don't want to put that much money into it, you know, if if uh, this franchise is dead, you know. I think they kind of want to br put it out there and see if it makes money. And if it does, then they'll probably make, you know, a physical copy down the road. But they just don't want to, like, spend so much money and then find out that the the horror the survival horror franchise the fatal frame franchise died with the ps2 and xbox because sure. their spinoff for the ds like a spear camera i think it's called spear camera uh that didn't do well but of course it was not from the same company and it wasn't uh made to be like an actual fatal frame it was the spin-off and it was it just was so bad i it's cringe worthy it's definitely the room level cringe worthy wow okay that's awesome that's awesome no i i was wondering about that too i knew that the the ds did get a version um but i didn't know if it was like a direct um, port of like the ps2 one or something like that um, but that's an interesting concept because I don't know if a lot of mature games do really well or even if, if the Fatal Frame games are mature or not, I don't know. But it's it's like 
I didn't think that they would think that's a great idea anyway to bring it out on the 3DS or the, the DS or whatever because those are more your casual gamers or your um, you know games that are kind of okay for everyone. I, I think a majority of people that play the DSs and the 3DSs are kids, you know, even like late teens and early 20s. Um, and, and if you're going to come out with a survival horror style game, you know, you kind of want to be fully immersed into the console with the surround sound mm -hmm. speakers and a nice size TV and whatever, you know, to kind of completely engulf yourself into the game. Um, whereas a handheld, it's like, I'm not really getting creeped out because the screen is right. big, you know. Um, yeah, I, I think I think the company decided to go with, uh, with Nintendo is for the, you know, the uh, gamepad. Yeah, I, think. I mean that is that is a really universal way to um, play games. Um, it's a really not universal, I should say. It's a really original idea, uh, a way to play games with that. It's the only system that has a screen on the controller. So if you want to do some interesting concepts with that, I mean that's the system to do it for. Um, it's just it's unfortunate. It's it's a smaller um, smaller group of people that own Wii U's as versus like a PS4. If it came out on the PS4. Right there's a good chance a lot more people might get to play it. That's true. Um, also, Wii U, the final thing that's coming out is Xenoblade Chronicles X in that's December. Right. That's right. That's the big one. Honestly, yeah. when I first heard about the Wii U and they had trailers about that, that was the big one. That's the one I've been mostly looking forward to, and I cannot wait to see what that gameplay is going to be like. It looks awesome. Yeah, and I think the first Xenoblades game kind of screwed itself over with only being available at GameStop right away. Yeah. I well, think if, that... it wasn't, if it wasn't for GameStop, it may not even gotten released here, from what I understand. Uh, give or take. I don't know. I don't know. But, but yeah, I mean, they could have at least brought it later onto everything else instead of just bringing it uh, back on the 3DS, I think, and just doing some yeah. goofy things. That's you right. know, they should have just kind of worked it out more and was just like, oh, we're just going to give it to everyone. Yeah. Because GameStop's really crooked in a lot of things they do. Yes, That's all are. I'm going to say. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> bad to the people that work there. Just, yeah, you know, no, their, I, I their decisions I think... are really, really shifty. Yeah, no, I agree. I think the people, the, the guys who work there and make a living, just, you know, the guys behind the counter and the guys that are helping you find games if you need help finding games or answering questions, they're good people. And they're all instructed to say what they do. And they're all looking on a computer and finding out information. If you bring in a game that's rare and they only give you six bucks to store credit, it's not because they're jerks and they're trying to rip you off. It's because that's what the system tells them to. And that's what their upper management tells them to do. Um, it's unfortunate. I'm not a fan of GameStop at all either. I, I go, I do, I do look there and shop there once in a while. I've picked up a few good things from them over the years. Um, I think Game Informer is a complete waste of paper. It's a terrible game magazine. Um, I haven't read one seriously in years. I think it's just garbage. Um, but uh, and that's all part of the GameStop family is that magazine. So it's like the, one of the only few gaming magazines that are left that are about current consoles. Um, I'm not even sure if Play is still a magazine, and I don't remember if EGM is still going anymore either. But they were, they were. I those don't were, think so. Those were good magazines. Game Informer is, is not. We could do an entire episode about game magazines if we wanted to. Right. Um, but yeah, GameStop, I'm not a big fan of. And one thing that they've done recently that I'm even less of a fan of that has actually kind of pissed me off is that they're um, trying to get into retro gaming, and yep. they're they're buying and selling retro games. They don't sell the retro games in store, at least not very often, um, but they buy them from people and give them store credit or cash, which is very, very low, um, and then sell them online. They have a lot of rare games on their websites now. I've seen Mega Man X3, I've seen Earthbounds, I've seen Chrono Triggers, um, all the Dragon Warriors for NES on GameStop.com. Um, their prices are actually pretty comparable to what other game stores are selling them for. The problem is, is, is that GameStop themselves have kind of contributed to this, um, this, you know, rare or, or, or having a hard time finding of retro games in, you know, game stores and stuff. Now, um, GameStop for a long time 
in the late 90s and early 2000s all the way up until, I don't know, maybe seven or eight years ago, um, they were taking in retro games of all kinds. But when they weren't selling them, what were they doing with them? Um, a lot of people said that they were destroying old games or just throwing them in dumpsters. That's why like, you always hear these stories about GameStop dumpster diving. Um, you can find game consoles and games and instruction manuals and stand-ups and all kinds of stuff. It's, it's terrifying that they're throwing this stuff away instead of just donating it or selling it or whatever. Um, but another thing that they have been doing is just filling up a warehouse full of retro games. It means they probably have a pallet full of Earthbounds or you know, imagine a pallet full of like Final Fantasy threes from the Super NES. Like this is, it's, it sounds like, oh yeah, sure, whatever, like who has that? But honestly, they probably do have a warehouse full of retro games and they could pull them out at any time and sell them off just to get rid of them or destroy them or whatever they want to do with them. But now they're selling them at what they consider as market value and this is the most inflated that the gaming gaming market has been ever before um, Super right. Nintendo games. Just average super, <laughs> average super Nintendo games going for 20 or $30 that were five to ten dollars just a year ago like i mean chrono trigger jumped in four months from 60 to a hundred dollars you yep. know like that yep. shouldn't happen in like four months no you know? and that's the problem too is that when you go to gamestop's website and you see how much they're charging for a chrono trigger then all the other game stores that are local to them or or even you know other types of chains are trying to match them Saying, "Oh, they're trying to charge eighty-nine dollars for Chrono Trigger. Well, we only set, we only charge sixty. Let's get our, get our price up to eighty-nine too, so we can, you know, try to match them and stay up with them." And it's like, it sucks. GameStop is a shitty company. I'm not a big fan of theirs at all. But anyway, back to games. There's a guilty pleasure that I have, and I know you have the same pleasure. Maybe not in the game, but in the the franchise itself, and that's uh, wrestling. The new WWE game, 2K16, is coming out. And I know it's just year and year just bringing in the same thing. But these these people, they they got to, like, join up. Oh. Well, are you, what, are you, what are you, Zach Hagenbusher here? I don't want to talk about wrestling. I don't want to talk about wrestling. wrestling all all I want to say The only is, good wrestling game I've ever played in the last five years was TNA Impact. They all suck. Let's talk about something else. I'm just saying Mick Foley is awesome, and he's in the game. But, so Fallout's coming out for a holiday, and that's a big one. <laughs> you know, Mick Foley was great in uh, WWF No Mercy on the N64. That was a great wrestling game. Yeah, I own that game. That's a fun I, I loved it when Three Pixels did this. <laughs> hey, it wasn't... It was like, it was like seven... Seven... Uh, seven. I don't know what I was trying to say there. It's like seven frames of animation in a in a polygon. That's impressive, but, uh, man. Don't rip on that. But no, I mean Fallout Four is coming out. Yes, that's true. On the same day as the new Tomb Raider, I believe Tomb Raider Revenge Wait, or something like that. What? No, I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. What'd you say? It's it's the same it's day like, as Tomb Raider. It's like games matter, other than Fallout Four. You're like, oh, there's games coming out. No one cares about any other game coming out on that day. Wait. I think oh, oh, here's man. a big thing. I think the people that made the release date for Tomb Raider should have switched that right away once they found out Fallout 4 was coming out the same day. That's the thing, though, is I think, and I, I don't know what I, what I, I don't know anything. This is just from conversations that I've had recently, but I think that Fallout 4 was originally scheduled for October. And then it got pushed to November, which which was the same date that Tomb Raider, the new Tomb Raider, is coming out on. And it's not really the the Tomb Raider people's fault. It's their their date initially. Like they picked it first. Fallout fell back into it. Oh well, yeah, but I still would have switched it. I would have been like, how close is this game to be complete? Let's bring it out the week before to make our numbers. You know, because people be playing Fallout Four for months without, you know, stopping and caring about anything else. So I just think them keeping that date is a bad thing. Well, what about... So when like, Fallout 4 comes out, you think that the only thing people will be playing is Fallout 4? I think they'll be playing other games, but they'll be the major. You can look on your friends list, and there'll be, like, 
Destiny, Destiny, 40 people playing Fallout 4, and one person playing FIFA. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what about Halo 5? I thought that was going to be a big holiday splash, too. There's gonna be... it, it'll come out, people will play it, and then they'll be done after, like, a month. Really? Yep. That's what I believe. Because wow. Halo 4 came out, and that was the way for me. I'm like, going to get Halo 4, going to play it, played it, beat the story, kind of got bored of it, put it down. Interesting. So okay. I'm, I'm, I'm saying Fallout 4 is going to be uh, one game of the year and two, the biggest grossing game in the holiday season. Do you have a console that plays the, the, the Halo Fallout franchise? I have a PS4. Okay. So I'll be playing Fallout 4. Very cool. My uh, oh. Our family has a an Xbox One or the x Yeah. We, yeah, that's what it's, we picked. It's fine. It's fine. It Actually, is. we have a, we have a lot of fun with it. There's a lot of really great games for it. I know that Microsoft is, is feeling a little bit of pressure now from being really far down um, in, in console sales. I was see, I was looking at some numbers um, just from August, which is still just last month, but early August on numbers of console sales. And the PS4 was already up to 24 million consoles sold. The Xbox One was at about 13, and the Wii was at just hit 10. Um, and that 10 might actually be a 12 or a 13 now as well for the Wii U, whereas the Xbox yeah. One, I don't know if it's had a real elevation. But I don't know if you knew or not, but uh, Mario Maker, when that was released in September, um, just earlier this month, um, in Japan, that game alone actually doubled console sales of the Wii U in total for Japan. Um, they had like 2.5 million consoles sold for the Wii U, and it actually jumped to five just when Mario Maker was released. And it was just announced, I believe yesterday, or maybe it was just this morning, I can't remember when, um, that Mario Maker has already sold one million copies. It fell wow. since the 18th. Like, that's, what, 12 days? That's a, that's amazing. And that game looks amazing, by the way. Yeah, I, I've seen some videos on people making, uh, like, their levels, and it I know. looks fun. I really wish we had a Wii U so I could try those out. If, I, I if, really, really would love to play some Mario levels that people have made, some really ingenious-looking ones. Um, it looks like so much fun. I think I would quit my job and <laughs> just play that game if I had it. Like, you know, playing millions and millions and millions of levels and then be like, yeah, I don't need to eat either. I'll just, you know, eventually just whittle away. It's fine. I got Mario <laughs> to play. It's good. Yeah, it looks really fun. I think that um, when you were talking about earlier about games that would come out that make you want to purchase a system... Uh, for you, is Fatal Frame. For me, I think it would be Mario Maker, the game that I'd want to uh, get the Wii U for. But speaking of that, too, um, next year in December, so we were like 15 months away from this, um, but the big Kickstarter came out just a couple months ago. Was it June or July? For Shenmue 3. Um, and that uh, we pre ordered. We pre-ordered the uh, $300 version, which is a special edition box set, all this kind of stuff that comes with it, some kind of signed strategy guide or something like that, too, um, for the PS for the PS4, which is a system I don't even own yet. So we need to get a PS4 sometime in the next 15 months. So Shenmue 3 is my uh, reason for buying a PS4. I think there's a lot of really great stuff coming out for it. It looks like a really cool system. I bet the games that do come out on PS4 are more fun to play on a PS4 versus an Xbox One. The controllers are, you know, it depends on how big your hands are, but sometimes the controllers uh, feel more comfortable to people. Um, and I'm, I'm stoked and I'm excited to get a PS4. Uh, it's something that a lot of my friends have been saying, get a PS4, why do you have an Xbox One? Like, get a PS4. Uh, but, you know, the Xbox One is pretty cool in its, in its own right. Yeah, Shenmue three. Uh, you didn't get the the jacket pack, the f like. Wasn't that like five thousand dollars? Yeah, it was like five. I think it was like seventy five hundred. And no. you got the official jacket. No. No, I didn't. But I thought about getting the Kung Fury one, which is only two hundred fifty bucks. <laughs> um, there's a there's a Kung Fury jacket. I want one. It looks really yeah. cool. Well, it's two hundred fifty bucks though. So who's gonna get that? But yeah, Sh Shenmue hasn't been relevant. Or like you know, been talked about. Whoa, 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 
Whoa. Hold on. What? Whoa. I, you I, say I, hasn't been relevant? It hasn't. Shenmue, Shenmue <laughs> along with Semen, is the only game that is relevant. What? Did you say Semen? Oh, hold on. What? Did you say Semen? No, I said Seaman, you sicko. I said Sea Man. I you said, said Shenmue Seaman. Is, is the most important game. Shenmue, Shenmue 1 and 2 on the Dreamcast or the Xbox, the original Xbox with Shenmue 2 that came on the US, are, are some absolutely immersive games that are completely open. I mean, it is Grand Theft Auto before Grand Theft Auto was Grand Theft Auto. Um, these games are amazing. And I don't have to sit and explain it to you. You know Shenmue. I mean, you're not Just remember, you got to take your shoes off. You always. It's just oh, courtesy. Was, That's the game. It's the game. It's a game with, where you play a character who has a conscience. And he's not completely available. Just go and like rape people and murder everyone. He's just a dude. You can get a job. You can collect video games. You can collect trinkets. You can you can go and buy food. You can be nice to people. You can get in fights in the middle of alleys. Like it's 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 amazing. And you 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 get revenge on the guy who killed your father. And the freaking story has been left wide open for no. 15 years. Like, it's been a cliffhanger since the end of Shenmue 2. Like, this is... Oh, my God. I, I, One thing I have to do, though, is I have to play through Shenmue 1 and 2 before Shenmue 3 comes out. Like, I gotta make myself do that. And that's gonna take me months with how slow I play games these days. But I gotta put everything on hold and just play through <laughs> Shenmue 1 and 2. Because that's gonna be awesome. The, I, the, to play through those again is like marathoning Star Wars before the new Star Wars movie comes out. I just again. remember the first uh, game where just every little bit, like, you couldn't skip animations. You, like, if you walked through the door, you saw him walk through the door, take his shoes off, and then step. You can just be like, all right, can can I just go into the house? I don't yeah. need to see this every yeah. time. And you go into the house like 50 times a day. So yeah. it's like, oh, my God. Well, you got to just take it easy, man. But What's the rush? What's I love the, the games. Rush? It was an RPG fighting game, like a uh, puzzle game. It, it was, was like, like everything. They mixed, mixed Animal Crossings and Virtua Fighter. Yeah. Definitely. Pretty much. That's that's awesome. No, I'm I'm really excited for that. That's my system seller. Um, I'm gonna get a PS4 just to get Shenmue three. I mean, maybe that'll be the only game I ever get. I don't know. But speaking uh, of a system not selling, uh, what was that? The what was that Kickstarter failure that happened? Holy crap! We could do a whole episode about that itself. It's not actually a Kickstarter. It was Indiegogo, and the reason why it was Indiegogo is because Kickstarter requires, if you want to try to start a Kickstarter to make a video game system like that we did successfully two years ago, um, Kickstarter requires you to at least have a freaking working prototype. Um, the Retro VGS game console, which it, it's got some interesting ideas, um, but it's such a miserable failure. Um, mainly because they had no substance. They had no way of actually giving people what they wanted or giving what giving people what they were even saying they could do. Um, they didn't have a prototype. They didn't have any idea of how to get it done. They didn't have any concept. Like Their ideas that they were coming up with just sounded so stupid where it's just like, is this really a thing? Is this really going to be an actual thing? Or is it just, or do these people just, are they trolling everyone? Is it just a big joke? And then they're just seeing how many people fall for it. Kind of like Donald Trump running for president or something. Is this the equivalent of that? I mean, um, seriously, it's... I, I didn't see the Indiegogo uh, actual, like, page. But the stuff I was hearing that they were, look, they were looking for $2 million, which isn't that much for a new council. But then they were saying, like, once a council's released, it's going to be, like, a $400 council. Yeah, I that think you have the... To pay for. I think the original like black one was going to be three hundred. Then, if you wanted specific colors, it was going to be you're going to pay another hundred fifty for shells or something like that. It's kind of funny because I was actually going to I was going to actually grab my Atari Jaguar for this uh, show today um, because it's the exact same shell. Like that yeah. shell is, is an Atari Jaguar Jaguar um, Jaguar Jaguar Jag <laughs> Jag Jaguar Jaguar. Um, it's just the shell from that. And they're even using the same shells for the cartridges, too, because, well, that's what they got, and they fit in that shell. Um, but they didn't have a working prototype. They didn't have any idea of how to get it even done. They are just like, this is what we're going to do, and we got this guy who's going to make this, and this guy's going to make that. We bought the, 
the press to make these shells for you, and um, they wanted $2 million. And Indiegogo does not require you to have to have a working prototype, does not really even require you to ever deliver on anything. It's just a way of getting you donations to make this thing. And they had a 45-day um, window to get this $2 million. They had, I believe, almost 200 people donating. And they were donating anywhere from 10 bucks each to a couple hundred dollars each to get the system. And I think they made almost, gosh, uh, I don't remember what it was, maybe uh, $150,000 or something like I that. I know or, they made like 3% of the asking. Yep. yep it, was, it. it was so low. Yeah, and with everything kind of just when the, the SHIT hit the fan, um, everyone started pulling their money back out because you can pull your money out if you're getting a little like, ooh, I don't know if this is actually going to happen. So you can actually undonate your money um, before the 45 days is up. And so many people started doing that that they were down to like just uh, slightly over 50,000 or maybe up to 60,000 left. And they're like, after a week of having this Indiegogo thing going, they're like, yeah, let's just not do it anymore. And they sent out an apology and said, if anybody would like to keep their money in the donation bin, you can do that. We're going to continue to work on this. We're going to try really hard to keep it going, but for right now, we're pausing it or whatever. And the concept of it is kind of neat because, like we were just talking about earlier, um, Shovel Knight or Read Only Memories or Voldor the Viking, like, like those games are awesome and they're really fun and they're download only. The only way to play them is by downloading air to your video game console. You never get to physically see it. You never get to page through an instruction manual. Like getting a console like the Retro VGS, if you were able to get a physical box with a cartridge, with an instruction manual, I mean, there's a certain amount of understanding on my part because I love having a big library of games and being able to just pull a game out and look at it physically before you even put it in. Kind of go through whatever extra add-ons, maybe a poster, you know, stuff like that's really cool to have. And if I could see a physical version of Shuffle Night or a physical version of Read Only Memories or a system like that, like that's something I might actually do. Like that makes sense to me. But the way that they tried to put it together and just trick people into giving them money without even having any clue of how to do it was really shady. And it's just it exploded. If you want entertaining story from beginning to end over the last two weeks on how this whole thing just fell apart. Um, check NeoGeo.com, check the Atari Age forums, and then a little bit uh, blurbs here and there, just basically talking about what was happening on Atari Age um, at the PCEngineFX.com forums, because the story is just ridiculous how weird it got and how just completely screwed up the whole thing was from the, from the get-go. Like, there were serious big-time YouTubers who were backing this thing and got really excited about it. And when nothing was happening with it and they didn't really have a working prototype and they didn't really have any kind of idea of how to do it, everyone just started, just kind of started stepping away and slipping away from it. And it just blew yeah. up. Uh, definitely. Uh, like the interviews with these guys, they, they are oblivious to what's happening. Like they're like, why, why do we need a prototype? We don't have any money but we can get it. And they're saying that the $2 million, uh, two-thirds of it, like $1.2 million, will be going towards the manufacturer of the council. And then they started just, because they, they didn't know what to say, they kept on talking about their uh, profit margins. Oh, our profit margins are so low, it doesn't matter. Uh, what's the next question? How about these games? Oh, our profit margin is low, so we can do this. It's like, we don't care about if you make money. Can you make this what you're, you know, what you stated? Can you make it? And they're like, well, with the, if we had to design a whole new, like, shelf for the councils, then you would have to pay, like, 50 bucks more. So we use the Jaguar stuff because we didn't have to, and it costs, like, five bucks a piece. But our <laughs> margins are really low. I'm like, oh, my God, I don't care about you anymore. Like, yeah. Once yeah. you start overlapping what you say, you pretty much don't have a clue on what's going on. Yeah, and then they had they did have a fir a couple of first party games that were coming out for it, and I can't think of the names of them off the top of my head. But um, they were just games being made by them. They look like fun little platformers, something that could be done on like the Genesis or something. You know, I mean, they look like neat little games. And then on the Kickstarter page, they had a whole section of game developers 
that are big time game developers making games for the, the Wii U or the PS4 or the Xbox One or the OUYA, the Android devices. Um, and it just said like these developers are looking into making games for the retro VGS, or it would say like these people may make games for retro VGS, <laughs> and they list all these like huge games like like Volgar the Viking and Shovel Knight and all this stuff. They list list down there, and it's like you're scrolling through and you're like, man, like that was like if this could actually happen, but they don't anywhere say that these developers are signed up to make games for this, and they even they even like trick you even more by having the cartridges themselves. Um, with like computer sh photoshops of like the, the names of the games on them, like read-only memories in a cartridge format, like or uh, or Towerfall in a cartridge format, like all these games that are are famous downloadable only games um, on these cartridges to make you think like, holy crap, I'm going to buy this game system to play these retro games that are retro style games um, on this thing and get actual physical copies. But it it, it basically like it, it it's trying to sort of go after that collector market of people that buy video games that don't even play them, that just let them sit on shelves. Like, oh, I need to get this system to collect them all and get my physical copies of Shovel Knight and put it on the shelf up next to my Mega Man 6s and, you know, whatever. Like, it's like it's almost kind of the way that they were talking in those interviews. They weren't saying, like, oh, these games are going to play so well or these games are going to be amazing and revolutionary. They're like, they're going to look good on a shelf. <laughs> like, yeah awesome they're gonna look good on a shelf great and then i don't know if you you i know you listened to an interview or two but did you hear anything about the crazy ideas they had for bugs like the ideas that they had about games that are released these days that when they have a bug in them then they have to patch it and their whole idea is that you'll never ever have to patch one of their games that are on the retro vgs games because they will be bug free when they're released to the public like, that's bull how can you there are no games that are completely bug free like there are nintendo and super nintendo and i mean those super nintendo games or, or n64 games there are bugs in them mario 64 ocarina of time these games that had hundreds of unit of, of unit testing and testing and qa people like they have bugs in them mm -hmm. like you're not going to be able to get a game that's bug free and then they said in one of the interviews was that if a game did come out it had a crippling bug in it, like if someone found something that made the game unplayable or whatever, like say Assassin's Creed Unity style or whatever, um, they would take them all back as sort of a recall and fix them and send them back out to you. Yeah. That's and then cool. what? Then, yeah, exactly. And then what do you do? <laughs> what do you do then when you have a game that's going to be released on Steam simultaneously with a game that's released on the retro VGS, like? You have a game that comes out and say it's like 99% perfect, but there's a bug. So the retro VGS game gets postponed for a couple of weeks, but that Steam game comes out already. And what happens when people run into that pat that issue? They just patch it, and you get you're able to still play it. It had the bug, but now it's patched, it's fixed. Now you've already played through it. This game hasn't even been f and released yet because they're still trying to figure out how to patch a cartridge. It's just they just sounded like idiots, and the ideas are. The ideas are cool. Like you don't have to log into a user account. You don't have to install the game on your systems. You don't have to do this. You just put the game in and you play it and done. Like it's that's it. There's no download. There's nothing. But you forget about the fact that there is ordering it from an online company or going to a store or doing all these things that add way more time to it than just downloading it overnight and waking up and playing it the next day or whatever. Uh, these guys did not sound at all uh, thrilled at all in their interviews. Like you're like, hey, how's it going? And they'll be like, good. Uh, so our council, like they already knew that they were like facing defeat while they're yeah. trying to promote this. Yeah. And honestly, with like retro gaming, if I wanted, you know, to like spend all this money to play games on cartridge and that, I'll just, you know, pick the ones I know and trust like Nintendo or, you know, Sega, because I know their games are good. I've played them before. You know, why should I, like, risk all my money on this one that the games might be complete, you know, dog crap when they can't even understand what's going on in their own company? Yeah, I mean, that's really true. <clears throat> I think some of the best messages that have been out there um, just from people in the community and on Atari Age or on Neo Geo or on PC Engine FX, the best message that I've seen or read um, from people is just, Hey, you want to spend money on something that shows you're into retro gaming or whatever? 
get into homebrew, like support homebrew developers, people that are making new Super Nintendo games, new Genesis games, new Atari Jaguar games, you know, new PC Engine games. Like get into supporting those people because if you see a game that comes out on an old system, but it's a new game, and maybe it's not the best game in the world, maybe it's pretty cool, but it doesn't seem quite as good as the games you played when you were a kid, support them anyway because that 20, 30, 40 bucks that you sent to them is going to go towards them developing more and newer stuff, and they're going to get better and better and better each time they make a new game. That's the route you should go because they're playing or they're developing games for systems that we already own or systems that you can get very easily at a thrift store or pawn shop or whatever. I mean, games for the Genesis, games for the Neo Geo. Like, there's there's the Neo Dev Neo Neo Dev team. Um, there's just so many good homebrew developers out there, and that's where your money should be going, not to these idiots at the retro VGS that are just making a system that nobody has a clue if it's going to even be a system. And right now, it's not. So support. Yeah, I think. I think the big thing is support the people that have the excitement. You know, backing whatever they make. If they have that fire in their eye. They actually want to do this. Support them instead of some dudes going. We could probably make money off of this. The eye of the tiger, if you will. Ha ha! Why? Don't ever do that. Why would you do, do that? this? Just oh my totally god! Oh god! Screw my focus out at all. Oh god! <laughs> no. Don't ever no, do that. Not the eye. Not the eye. Anything. All right, so I wanted to show one last thing and um, also thank everyone for coming on here. Um, I think this is a good this is a good test. This is a good first episode. I want to do this every week. Um, anybody that's interested in being a part of it should definitely let me know, either on Facebook or on the YouTube. Zizz. Um, and Ben, if you're going to come back and do more episodes, that would be fun. Um, we're going to try to get a lot of different people in this. So you might not see Ben every week, but... I definitely invite you to come back and have fun with us again. But um, my last pickup that I just got in the mail today, and I'm really excited about it, is a Neo Geo MVS cart. Speaking of Neo Geo, and the MVS games, I don't know if you know about this, but it's a multi-video system. These are games you can put in arcade cabinets to play, and it is Metal Slug 1, the first Metal Slug game, which is still kind of my favorite one out of the series. But I can't wait to pop this in and play some of that on my Neo Geo Neo Geo. That's something new that I got. I'm pretty stoked about that one. Um, but in in other news, uh, or not really under, in other news, but in um, in in what was it? Ben, you you distracted me. Are you picking your nose? No. No. What is? I'm not. God, I was I was so anyway, just. I was in awe at the Metal Slug. It's Neo. a fun game. It's a great it game. It is. I love the franchise. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, I um, I played all seven, and I think they're fun games. But um, we're gonna go ahead, and I think we're gonna end this now. I think what we're gonna try to do is one hour each episode. So right now we're a little over an hour, but that's okay. That's totally fine. We didn't get like kicked off or anything. So. I am very, very excited to have seen the number of viewers go up to, I think, five or six at one time. That's really cool to see that many people logging in for our first time ever. We didn't really even, like, advertise this or talk about it or promote it at all. So that's really cool to have people live watching it. And I hope we eventually have a lot of people watching it on YouTube when it replays. Um, you can watch it anytime on the Game Huggers or the my own Joshua Yeager um, YouTube channel. But I thank everyone so much for participating and so for watching. Um, and Ben, I thank you most of all for being here with me and doing this fun little run. Have you been, that, that was a strange view. Anyway, what we're going to do now is we're going to sign off. Um, I thank you very much for checking us out. You can always um, talk to me on Facebook or on this YouTuber thing here. You can message me here or uh, comment on the videos. Tell us what you liked or what you didn't like. Um, let me know anything at all that you'd like to have us talk about next time. Um, and you can also follow me at the little thing right there. It says at underscore Joshua Turbo. That's my Twitter handle. Um, you can find me on Twitter. And don't forget the underscore as it is the most important underscore in all of the internet. Thank you, Ben. Uh, we will see you and talk to you guys next week. Take it easy, guys. <laughs>